this was the first of the Axe Force rackets where I went, ooh, I think this leaning racket has closed the gap. I think I might have a new favorite looking racket here with leanings Axe Force 100. Just take a look at the detail on the decals and paint job. Additionally, I'll be comparing this Axe Force 100 to the Axe Force 90, both Tiger and Dragon 2. Will this 100 be a step up compared to the 90, like how Flexisport stepped up and sponsored this video? The Axe Force 100 was launched in the second quarter of 2023, but I personally saw this racket back in early February when I made a very short stopover in Singapore, and I was immediately in awe of how well the racket was finished in terms of design and paint job. You all know I find the Leaning Aeronaut 9000 rackets really Really good looking but this is certainly up there if not better in terms of racket finishing. The gold paint job complements the matte black sections of the racket really well and you can also feel the decals on the racket frame and shaft itself too. It does feel very premium. Obviously if you have a premium racket like this and want to protect it from damages and chips on the frame remember to check out the premium racket protection tape on ckydb.com forward slash shop. It's worth it. In Mandarin speaking markets the Axe was 100 is no known as the Axos 100 Qilin, and interestingly the Qilin isn't mentioned in non-Mandarin speaking markets. You will actually find two of them on the Axos 100 racket's shaft, one next to the 100 model number and another super cool looking one closer to the cone of the racket. Chilin are legendary creatures which are present in many cultures mythology, although I believe they first originated from China. They're also present in Western cultures and was present in the recent Fantastic Beasts Harry Potter spin-off film too. Chilins generally have dragon heads and are often combined with a deer or a horse's body. Some of them even have a lion's body, but Chilins certainly carry scales on their body and you can also see where this inspiration for the decals of this racket comes from. When compared to the X-Force 90s, other notable visual differences comes from the grommets. When I recently reviewed the Leaning Halberter 8000, I have noticed Leaning transitioning from the previously amazing looking square edge grommets to the current rounder versions. The Axwell's 100s grommets were all round edge ones, so some slight differences compared to the 90s there. The grommet sizes were also larger in diameter, which is consistent with the X-Force 90s, which I believe are designed to promote some string movement for a little bit more hold time on the shuttle. Obviously, having bigger grommets on single strings have been around for a little while now, and it was first seen on Yonex's Astrox series rackets. In terms of frame design, the Axe Force 100 retains the overall shape of the frame as the 90s alongside the fully recessed frame profiles to help with swing speeds. In terms of measured specs, the Axe Force 100 measured up pretty close to the 90s and we'll start from the frame. It's got a height of 23.9cm with a width of 18.3cm which is slightly slimmer than usual rackets but it's consistent with the Axe Force 90s. For frame thickness, the 100 measured in at 9.9mm which is a touch thicker than the 90s which came in at 9.7 millimeters. Still anything below 10 millimeters is considered thin in my book so that's good. If we then move on to the shaft, the Axwell 100 has been marketed heavily for its 6 millimeter shaft which is incredibly thin. I measured it at 6.3 millimeters which is very similar to the Axwell 90s as well as Yonex's directly competing Astrox 100ZZ. 6.3 millimeters is still the thinnest shaft I've ever measured on the channel and it looks very good. On a side note, I've certainly found that I consistently measure 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters thicker than what Leaning has marketed on many of their rackets, so one of us needs calibrating, but there's certainly some consistency on both sides. Shaft length was 20.5 centimeters, which is similar to the 90 Dragon, but the 90 Tiger was half a centimeter longer. For its handle, the Axwell 100 is paired with a handle that is 17.5 centimeters long, which is similar to the 90 Tiger this time, whilst the 90 Dragon was half a centimeter longer. And to help with my workflow of measuring and producing videos on my channel, Flexispot is kindly sponsoring this video. I've been a very happy customer of Flexispot previously and loved the performance and function of their standing desks. Many of you will have noticed that I've moved to a new office and I needed an extra desk and Flexispot kindly supplied their E7 series standing desk, which I'm very impressed with. The first thing that jumped out at me when building the E7 was how heavy and well machined they are. The instructions are pretty straightforward and I went for the bamboo tabletop for a sustainable option and it turned out better than I expected. I was already very happy with the stability of the previous Flexispot standing desk I bought, the EF1, but the E7 is a huge step up in that alongside the build quality and feel too. For standing adjustments, the E7 incorporates memory options on the touch panel so you can lock in the various positions which you normally 
they prefer. One of the advantages of the E7 is also the ability to go lower than the usual 70 centimeters of height, going all the way down to 58 centimeters, which is very handy for kids as well as many of us who aren't exactly the tallest. For me, it's super helpful when I need to film in a top-down position setting, and so I can adjust the height of the table to how I need it. Another advantage of the control panel of the E7 is the child lock feature. Now, I don't have a kid running around the house pressing buttons yet, but I found myself pressing the buttons of the table when leaning against it, so the child lock feature has instantly become one of my favourite features that I did not know I needed. Additionally, I asked for caster wheels as well as an underside drawer to go with the desk and they've been very handy. The W1 caster wheels are well built, smooth and comes with locking brakes, which you will need on hardwood floors. If you're on thick carpets, you might be able to get with it with no brakes. The slimline drawer is good for those small items which normally sits on the desk, so they keep things clean. You can also choose to install the drawer anywhere on the tabletop you like, so lots of flexibility there. Overall, I cannot recommend this E7 standing desk enough and I find myself spending more time standing with it than I do sitting. Thank you again to Flexi Sports for sponsoring today's video. In terms of stringing, the Axe 100 was rated to £30 of string tension for the 4U version and £31 for the 3U model. What I have here for testing is the 4U G5 model and I strung it with my usual setup of Yonex Aerobyte at 27 by 29 pounds and there was no issues with stringing whatsoever. So how does the Axe 100 feel and play? Well for starters, it's stiffer and head heavier than the 90s. Remember what I said in the Axos 90 review that I struggled to time properly initially without spending a long time getting adjusted to the Axos 90s? The Axos 100 did not have this issue as it was stiffer so it felt consistent with its response. There was no steep learning curve for me with the 100. It was certainly head heavy and bearing in mind this is a 4U model, I think the 3U is going to be very demanding for a lot of players. I did verify the swing weight of the Axos 100 with the Yonex Precision Scan Machine and yep, it did come out higher compared to the 90s. You can also see here that the swing weight numbers are different when the racket only had its factory grip on and compared to how I normally grip it. I'll be making a video looking closer at how our strings, grips, weight tapes and the premium racket protection tape affects the swing weight of our rackets and how we can fine tune that. Make sure you subscribe to find out when I publish that video. In the meantime, power shots felt stable, weighty and carried the show well with lots of pace. That also means smashers felt very sweet and enjoyable when you catch it nicely with good timing. Because the Axe Force 100 had plenty of head weight, I did find myself holding it slightly higher than usual with my thumb just under the cone to help with maneuverability and speed for the Axe Force 100. I think most of us would struggle with this, especially if you're not warmed up for a multi-hour badminton session, if you're not used to this kind of head weight or are not physically very strong. One thing that I felt was the G5 grip of the Axe Force 100 felt a little larger than a usual G5. It felt like a Yonex equivalent G4, so it could be the leanings G5. G6 is actually equivalent to Yonex's current G5. If so, I do think manufacturers should standardize their grip sizes, which should help everyone make easier purchasing decisions. In terms of overall stiffness and feel, this Axfos 100 is the first racket from the Axfos series where I would consider it properly stiff and not as whippy like the Axfos 90s or 80. This consistency in stiffness does help how the Axfos 100 react to your shots, which I find very pleasant. Granted, I do like slightly head heavier and stiffer rackets and this 100 was very nice in that regard. Again, there's no super steep learning curve with the response of the 100 and it reacts consistently, reliably and predictably, which is a nice change. The stiffness of the 100 is a different response to the stiffness and crispness from the Halbertech 8000, which I reviewed recently. It's up here if you want to check it out. But the Axos 100 carries a weighty stiffness where you can feel the shuttle hold onto the strings a little bit more, whereas the Halbertech 8000 has a responsive, crisp, but hollow feeling of stiffness. In terms of speed, this 100 isn't going to win you any awards, but it is not unwieldy. Because of its head weight, we are always going to struggle comparing it directly to a headlight or even balance racket. It is certainly helped by its fully recessed frame, but if you want it to react faster, you just have to hold it higher up on its grip. In comparison to both the Axe Force 90s, the 100 is certainly a step up in power, stability, head weight and stiffness. This is also coupled with the 100 being slightly more demanding physically compared to the 90 if you want to be able to maximize its potential. In some ways, this 100 reminded me a little of the old school Yonex Armatech 900 power and even just a little bit of the Vortrig Z Force 1. 
just pure brutes in that sense. In terms of maneuverability, I think the 100 is very, very similar to the 90 and no surprises there. Obviously the headlighter 90s are just a little bit easier to handle, but overall speeds are similar. If you find yourself wanting more head weight from the 90, you'll find this 100 pretty pleasant and solid. It does hold the shuffle pretty well from the larger grommets, which should help for power generation and control, but this head weight does come with a physical cost. In saying that, this was the first of the Axe Force rackets where I went, ooh, I think this leaning racket has closed the gap a little to the Yonex head heavy rackets. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.